Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Dumas Real Estate Podcast. This is going to be a fun one. We are talking all things Burnaby today. One of our prime markets of where we conduct our business a city in which we both have some personal experience from living in. Uh, Jamie grew up there, spent the first, what, 20 years of your life there? I'd say 24, I think. 24? 22 or 24. Yeah. And I've been living in Burnaby for the last four years. Um, there's lots to talk about. They're just talking about the main different hubs, how real estate has changed in the last, uh, well, since we've been involved in in, in Burnaby. Um but Jamie, why don't you start with just a little about the city? Yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in Burnaby. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood called Buckingham Heights on Buckingham. And uh, we actually had the listing of my childhood home, even though my parents don't have it, at 6315 Buckingham. And boy, has that neighborhood changed. Uh, but just kind of Burnaby as a, as a whole. It's, it's a big suburb. It's the closest suburb city right next to Vancouver. Uh, it's kind of like... It doesn't really have one downtown center. Mm -hmm. it's, it has four downtowns in a way, four city centers, uh, Brentwood, Metrotown, Lowheed, Edmonds. Um, it's kind of a commuter suburb in a way. It's a lot of people that live there, live there due to the proximity proximity to Vancouver. Yeah. And you know, I, I guess I kind of found growing up, it's, it's almost like two or three cities in one. You know, South Burnaby really has nothing in common with North Burnaby when you're a child. Um, you, you tend to have more neighborhood or community pride, you know, like the Hastings crowd or, um, you know, well, you name it where you grew up uh, or high school pr pride as opposed to the city pride. You know, right now I live in New Westminster. New Westminster is kind of New West proud. Burnaby doesn't have that same sort of local pride, but it does maybe on a neighborhood level. Um, it's a really well-run city from like a management perspective. It's, um, you know, I, I, I knew, I grew up with one of my best friends growing up. His dad was the city manager, uh, Bob Monker, for years. And um, I mean, they've been praised all over the world for one of the best-run cities. And in Canada, I think they were voted best-run city in 2009. And it's basically because they're debt-free. They have no mm -hmm. debt. They have, I think, over a billion dollars in reserves and they operate lean. So as a business, they're a really well-run city. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, the neighborhoods vary quite a bit in Burnaby. You can have the neighborhood that I grew up in uh, today is a very expensive neighborhood. Um, you, know, you can have land value properties uh, in the $3 million range, which is ridiculous. Uh, but then you can go to other parts of Burnaby where, you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't want to be in certain streets in certain neighborhoods or they're less desirable today. You know, I, I guess some of the neighborhoods like uh, where Burnaby borders courts, New Westminster, East Burnaby, Stride area, they're less desirable today, but they might change quite a bit over the next 20 to 50 years based on some projects coming mm -hmm. forward. So, you know, my history with Burnaby is long. Um, well, there's a lot we can talk about here, Denny. Uh, but I, I kind of want to go into, I guess, my growing up in Burnaby. Maybe we start there? Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. So, as I mentioned, I grew up on Buckingham in the 90s. Um, and I was probably one of the last generations of families in Buckingham Heights. <laughs> you know, when, when, when I was a kid, there was young families in that neighborhood. We would ride our bikes to each other's houses. <laughs> and today, if you go there, it's not necessarily the same. And I think that, um, that's mainly due to price points. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, you know, the demographic of the neighborhood has changed considerably. It's kind of uh, it potentially could be a victim like some of these you know, West Side Vancouver neighborhoods where there's the elementary schools are closing down because the uh, there's not enough kids anymore. Um, but yeah, the 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 just to put it in perspective, the Burnaby market was one of the craziest markets um, when the market was hot in 2016, and that basically triggered the foreign buyers were after certain neighborhoods pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. Metrotown area, South Burnaby area, Buckingham Deer Lake uh, got some attention uh, like Richmond did from the foreign buyer market. That helped drive up prices. So Burnaby peaked early, uh, peaked late 2015, early 2016 in price points. Um, but it, it, the, the prices got so high that it just changed the neighborhoods. It just changed the, uh, uh, the, the, the amount of families, the amount of uh, I don't know, communities that, you know, it just changed things. So my 
parents sold our family home in 2006. And uh, at that time, it was a year before I was in real estate. I think I was about 23 years old or so. Um, and at that time, I, I don't recall any young families that I knew uh, close, close to where my family home was. So at that time, the generation of kids that I grew up with had all escaped, <laughs> escaped the neighborhood. But they bought the home for something like $200,000 when I was two years old and 1985 or 86, and, and they sold it for 969 in 2006. And um, to put that in, that doesn't seem like a big number, but right after they sold it, it went up ridiculously. So it was one of those things where, imagine selling a property for, I don't know, what is it, 969,000 in 2006, and then over a period of, say, nine years, um, and in 2016, nine years later, it probably peaked at 3 million. So in a period of nine years, our childhood home, my parents watched it. I didn't tell them about it, but I definitely was aware of it. We watched it go up $250,000 a year for essentially nine years after they had sold it. Um, a little bit of seller's remorse there, but overall the markets have adjusted. And today it's kind of uh, a mute point because it's gone from a $3 million valuation to probably more of a $2 million valuation and that's more reasonable. Uh, but Burnaby is probably one of the craziest investments in the world <laughs> from say the market crash of 2009 to the peak of it in late 2015, 2016. So- um, Do you have any idea uh, why that was and why it, it spiked so much quicker and so much more than Newest right next door? Well, I, I think- And it was really uh, just like certain pockets of, of Burnaby too. It wasn't like the city as a whole. No, it wasn't. And there was, I think it got, well, there's a number of things. Uh, there was a foreign buyer wave that I did, I believe had influenced some markets. Burnaby South, particularly, maybe some areas of Government Road, probably more the luxury end of the new condo uh, market. So the, the higher end neighborhoods and, and say the new condos. But um, outside of that, uh, I don't really have, much more logic behind it. Like now that they have the foreign tax, um, the prices have mellowed a bit and it's been adjusted. Yeah. So today I feel that it represents a fair value comparatively to say Coquitlam or New West that were off the foreign buyer radar at that time. Right. But there was a period, I mean, here's a good example, Upper Deer Lake and Glenbrook North, New Westminster. Those are two different sub areas that are probably similar class sub areas in different cities. Um, in 2015, 2016, those post-war 1950s, 1960s bungalows on say a 6,000 or 7,500 square foot lot, um, at the peak of the market, the gap between the Upper Deer Lake version of that house and the Glenbrook North version of that house would probably have had about a $500,000 difference. So, you know, in Upper Deer Lake, it might be one eight, and in Glenbrook North, well, actually probably about 600 grand, probably mm -hmm. about one two at the time. Yeah. So a one two, the same house, arguably, Eight minutes down Canada Way, <laughs> eight minutes down Canada Way, the same style house and the same style lot was about $600,000 different because of the attention that one neighborhood got. Mm -hmm. Today, I mean, we have a listing in Upper Deer Lake. It's not at peak prices. And, and today um, it's been adjusted. And that say $600,000 gap, which was, uh, that would have been like 35% gap, is probably more of a, um, it's probably more of a $200,000 so. gap. Yeah. So, that, if that's an example of what the foreign tax did, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no better extreme than that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's probably part of it. Um, you know, I have one story, I have a few different examples here of just some like craziness behind the market. Cause I had, uh, I had a moment in 2010 where in my early in my career, I was chasing for sale by owners and there's a for sale by owner on, on Burns, uh, Upper Deer Lake, 2010. Uh, and the guy wanted $680,000 for the property. And it was a foot shy of a duplex lot, so it was a single family lot. Um, uh, but it, you know, it didn't excite me. You know? So I ended up buying in New West and building a little home. But that home that was $680,000 in 2010 ended up changing hands for I think $830,000 the next year. And it ended up selling in the peak of the market at 2016 for 1.998 million. So it was almost a triple three time, three X, um, nearly. Insane. I mean, it, was, it went up two and a half times in a period of six years. Mm -hmm. 
That was the most ridiculous example I could find of a regular single family home that hadn't changed in that period. And arguably when they sold it in 2016, that price they got was the luckiest price uh, or one of the highest price they could have genuinely got at any period of time. Like they would not see that again. Yeah. If it was again available today, it would probably be more of a 1.5, maybe 1.4. But I did not buy that home, Denny, and I watched it sell for 680, and I watched it sell again for 1998. <laughs> and uh, I learned my lesson. I'm like, okay, stop dwelling on shoulda, woulda, couldas. <laughs> but you, you have a, I mean, you have a little bit of a, a past with Burnaby because mm -hmm. I remember, you know, for those that aren't aware, uh, there was a time where I was Denny's realtor. That's right. And there was a time where we were looking at condos in Brentwood. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share your experience with those? Yeah, mine is more obviously through Strata Properties. And in 2011, when I contacted Jamie to buy my first condo, I wanted to be in Brentwood. I liked the location of it. I liked the proximity to downtown. I was working in Burnaby at the time, so it was like a five-minute drive to where I was working. And really just saw a lot of upside potential in that neighborhood. At the time, in 2011... I remember the buildings and the price points and the presentation centers that were open. Uh, one of the buildings we were looking at was called Oma. It was a two bed, two bath, about 900 square feet. I think it was listed at nine, uh, sorry, 428, 428,000. We offered 418 and the lowest the seller would go to is 425. To put that in perspective today, I'd say peak pricing in 2017, that unit was probably just over 700K. So it's gone up, what's what's that, 75% yeah. roughly? Yeah. Um, and today that unit is probably in the high sixes. So it's come off a little bit peak pricing. Um, but at the time, that building was one of the higher end buildings in the neighborhood that was maybe three or four years old. And since then, that area of Brentwood, which is where I live now, has just kind of exploded. And there is a ton of new construction. There's lots planned coming up. I, I kind of like the way that uh, Burnaby is planning their city in these little hubs around Skytrain stations and Brentwood is one of the biggest or going to be one of the biggest, maybe just behind Metrotown. Um, in the next, let's say 15, 20 years, there's going to be another 20 towers at least probably. Yeah, Brentwood is, mm -hmm. is, is changing it a lot and even the they have some major master plan communities in the yeah. works and there's still a lot of land that is unspoken yeah. for in those communities. Yeah. It's a cool area that is attracting a lot of like the biggest name developers in Western Canada, like Boza, like letting on McAllister, like Concord. Um, so it's really cool to see those bigger type developers who are seeing a lot of value in developing other areas other than just Vancouver proper. Yeah, absolutely. The The mall is something that uh, I believe it's Shape Properties that is doing the uh, amazing Brentwood. They've got an 11 tower community planned. They have uh, are almost done tower number three. In, in their plan with the city, they were redeveloping the mall, which is going to be pretty cool. It's almost done. It's supposed to be a little bit higher end than like a metro town and attracting stores like Nordstrom and things like that that are a little bit higher end. I think there's a Palladium or some, some version of a Palladium oh, coming in there. I, right? Do they have one of those at Metropolis back in the yep. day? Oh, wow. That was like high school <laughs> days or elementary school days. It's a Burnaby throwback here. Totally. Yeah. 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 The, I, so I live in that area now. I've lived there for four years. I love the location. It, for me, tr like a lot of our, our career is on the road and we're kind of, Brentwood is kind of right in the center of everything that we do. We're kind of North Vancouver out to Langley and it seems like anything, any appointment I can be there within 20 to 30 minutes, which is pretty unique, I think, in, in Greater Vancouver. For yeah. me personally, I love being close to uh, the North Shore Mountains in the summer, tons of amazing hiking trails. Um 20 minutes the other way, you're close to Port Moody with, again, tons of outdoor stuff, Brewer's Row. Like, it's, well, a, it's a really cool spot for, for that, like, young couple who is 25 to 35 kind of thing. And it seems like that is a lot of the demographic in that neighborhood. Is there a more central location to get... And like, I guess central in terms of Vancouver City. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... Like, you're, you're right next to the highway. Yeah. I don't think there's a more convenient spot to be if you have life in the burbs and life in the city. Totally. You know, yeah, you could be isolated in the city all the time if you mm -hmm. want to live in Vancouver, but 
you know, Brentwood, um, I mean, that's part of the reason why I, I have a history with Brentwood as well. It was the first place I bought, the first place I lived when I moved out of my family home. And I had, Metrotown was not on my radar. Mm -hmm. Lougheed was not on my radar. South Slope was not on my radar, Edmonds area. Um, Brentwood was. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, I bought into Tandem. Uh, uh, we actually have a listing coming up in the same building, same floor plan, right below my old place. And I bought there in 2006. No, it completed in 2006. Uh, and it was a one bedroom that I paid 196 for. And then by the time, it, uh, by the time I sold it, uh, in 2010, I think I sold it for 320 or 318.5. Mm -hmm. um, but it was that was my first win in do, real estate. Do you remember how big that was? So about 650 square feet, somewhere around there. So to put yeah. it in perspective, yeah. we just sold a listing in Solo District, which is arguably the nicest building to date in in the Brentwood area. It's f about four or five years old, built by Boza, really high end finishes, air conditioning throughout the building, which is very unique for the suburbs. We just sold a one bedroom that was 640 square feet for $611,000. So going back to the time in 2011 when I was looking in that neighborhood, the units were selling in the range of like 450 to $475 a square foot. We just sold a one bedroom for just shy of $1,000 a square foot that was five years old. So in the span of nine years, condo square foot prices have have doubled basically. Yeah, I, I remember seeing for the first time, oh, we're getting a thousand bucks a foot in Brentwood. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big milestone. I think it was what, 2016 where it started happening, I guess. Yeah. yeah somewhere there was there. a few developments that were pre sale above a thousand a square foot. Yeah. I think Solo might have been Solo 3, which is uh, the third tower in that development that is halfway up right now. I think that was one of them that was right around like 1050 to 1100 a foot. Mm. And I think Concord Brentwood was the other one. Yeah, Concord. Uh, We've had a client buy there and I mean, they sold out their initial phases when, when we were there and it was quite busy mm -hmm. and they were getting upwards of 1300 a foot. Yeah. You know, uh, there was a one bedroom, like one bedrooms were $700,000, mm -hmm. but it's, it's like a development of the future. You know, it's, it's, uh, it makes me realize that, oh, when these exist, Buildings that are built in, say, 2010 are going to really start looking a little more ancient because, yeah. you know, they, you know, aside from air conditioning, I think there was heaters on the deck and, and yeah. the amenities center was just another level. Like yeah. it's, it, it was a complex uh, on its own. But these, the master plan, that's a master plan community, 10 towers. Um, I think it's similar to what uh, amazing Brentwood is. Yeah. So, um, but I, I was quite impressed. Do you remember our assignment story from Amazing Brentwood? Vaguely. I know you went through so, a lot, but I just, <laughs> it was more you than me. <laughs> yeah. So we had a client buy pre sale at Amazing Brentwood as a three bedroom on the 57th floor of a 63 story tower. I think it was phase two, a uh, little over 1,400 square feet. We paid, I think it was 929, and this was at the end of 2015. The clients decided they didn't want to live there. The project was extended a couple of years and is now complete. So we assigned the unit in 2017, a little over a year later, you, let's say 18 months later, purchase price, 929, assignment price, 1.45. <laughs> so in a year and a half, that product went up half a million dollars. Yeah. So if you're wondering why there's lineups outside of every project for a couple yeah. of years, it was stories like that, <laughs> that people were thinking they could get rich every time. <laughs> it's crazy. It uh, is. You know, I think would be... Uh, kind of fun and a little valuable for people that don't know Burnaby as well. Let's kind of give some analogies of neighborhoods totally. and, and maybe kind of compare them to other maybe prominent neighborhoods in Vancouver. So mm -hmm. um, I'll start, you know, let's let Brentwood, Brentwood's a hub. Okay. So Brentwood is just a, the, one of the downtown cores. It would be kind of like, I don't know, the down, uh, Yale town or downtown of Vancouver equivalent. Mm -hmm. But like we said, Burnaby has four downtown cores yeah. and they're all, mm -hmm kind of competing for that space because they all have massive, massive projects. Yeah. So um, I think in terms of like yeah. amenities, it's on the path to be a type of Yale town. Obviously, we don't have the water right next yeah. door. Uh, but I think in terms of amenities, Brentwood likely is that future Yale town, is that like really cool restaurants and cafes. As more people move into the neighborhood, as more developments finish, there's going to be a need for these types of amenities. And they're just like, we're on the fringe of that stuff. It seems like every couple of years, there's some new things coming in. Uh, it's just no water. No, there's no water. And that's yeah. not 
going to change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, you know what? I, I think it's, well, before we get into Brentwood and where it's going more and the different cities and what's planned, the the residential, like the detached homes, because mm-hmm. Burnaby is, has a ton of detached homes and yeah. all the neighborhoods kind of vary from each other. So on the high end, um, I would say the most, arguably, I think the most prestigious neighborhood or the most expensive neighborhood is Lower Deer Lake. But that's not home to the most expensive home. Yeah. So obviously if Michael Buble lived in Lower Deer Lake instead of Government Road, that would make it unquestionable. You know, you couldn't argue it. But Michael Buble built in government. So <laughs> he, the best house in Burnaby is in Government Road. Uh, but, it, you know, at the time, it, like Burnaby on... Lower Deer Lake is home to Burnaby's highest sale. So there's a house at 6736. No, sorry, that's the wrong address. Um, there's a house on Burris. I, I don't have the house number, but there's a house on Burris that was owned by the funeral home family. I think it's the Lowen family. And it's so, sold uh, a while back for uh, $9.948 million. Uh, that, oh, I have it here. It's okay. 7629 Burris, $9.948 million. And what they did is they bought six lots and merged them all into one and built a massive shack. And it had like uh, a basketball court and hot tub and tennis court and everything. It looks, it's a palace. Way overbuilt for the neighborhood. And I don't even know if at that price they recoup their costs, to be honest with you. But that is the highest price sale. And when you look at land value, the land value of Lower Deer Lake, particularly next to Buckingham Heights, has on average the highest land value. Government Road would be right up there. Capitol Hill would probably be right up there as well. Yeah. But those three neighborhoods would probably, that would be like Lower Deer Lake would be the Shaughnessy. Mm-hmm. And, and arguably you could say the same for Government Road. And uh, Capitol Hill is more like a Point Grey because it's kind of more view oriented, smaller yeah, lots. Or like a Caresdale because yeah, yeah, they're, uh, all, they're all really smaller lots over there. Whereas Government and uh, Buckingham Heights like or Lower Deer Lake, the like it's not uncommon to have a 20,000 square foot lot. Like that's kind of the norm. Yeah. In those yeah. The government road is if they didn't have such large, large lots, there would be nothing special about government road. Yeah. It is really yeah. something they created through lack of density. Um, and that attracted some beautiful homes mm-hmm. and government road. If you haven't been on, it, it's a nice, charming street to drive down. I remember as far as I can remember as a kid, I would just stare out the window and admire the homes mm-hmm. every time I drive on that street. Um, North Burnaby, a little more dense. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, it was kind of like the Italian neighborhood. Uh, I don't know how much it is anymore, but I'm sure there's still remnants of that. Oh, it still is, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it's kind of North Van, uh, or sorry, North Burnaby, particularly around Hastings, has more of like an East Van vibe. Absolutely. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's completely the opposite vibe of Government Road in a way, and yeah. completely the opposite vibe of, say, East Burnaby. Yeah. Um, East Burnaby to me lacks a little bit of an identity. Yeah, there's good pockets. You know, I know people that live on the crest and love it. And there's definitely some pockets where you get, you know, like Robert Burnaby Park where there's some good little areas. But mm-hmm. it's not like, it's so diverse, East mm-hmm. Burnaby. There's no, like when you look at a street, every house looks different. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no real, there's no real hub in East Burnaby. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a commuter yeah. part of the city, right? There isn't a lot of walkability in, in that East Burnaby sector, whereas North Burnaby, Capitol Hill, around Brentwood, everything is walkable. There's one-off little butcher shops and bakeries and coffee shops and that kind of thing, whereas East Burnaby doesn't really have that center. No, no, it doesn't. It, and that's kind of my real pet peeve with Burnaby, really, and I don't have a solution for that, but... It'd be great if they they have these master plan communities that are massive, mm-hmm. but the commercial space they're attracting is it's expensive commercial space. It's, for sure. it's in new buildings. It's not going to attract hipsters. <laughs> it's not going to attract the you know the the cool places that you get on Commercial Drive or in East Van, Fraser or Main Street. And it would be it would be great to get some more of that uh, local entrepreneurship, bring in those community hub sort of businesses to Mm. Burnaby. That's what it really needs. You asked me one of the things that are the con of Brentwood and that's it for me is just those like small one-off coffee shops, breweries, little restaurants. That's what we're missing. We've got the Joey and Cactus and those kind of things, but there isn't really any diversity in those types of businesses. No, no. And I don't know if that will change uh, anytime soon. Um, The city of Burnaby is very great at running a lean city that's uh, not in debt. But from my friends in beer, they're not the best at understanding breweries. And uh, they're not the best at encouraging breweries to open there. 
Uh, and you know, that's a shame, you know, cause they have a lot of industrial space that mm. would make great homes for breweries. So is it too expensive? Like for, <sighs> for the density? Cause Burnaby really only has Daggerad. There is the Steamworks tasting room as well, but like from, is it, it I think it's just Daggerad. From my understanding, they're they're not loose enough. Like the tasting room model, you need a tasting room, you need seats, you need that lounge, you need that uh, those on premise sales to really help the bit, like help a craft brewery. Yeah. You know, if you're relying on taps and shelf space, it's a difficult business. But um, Burnaby's not as accepting of tasting rooms, mm. uh, like in terms of capacity. Right. So you know, you could have an expensive brewery with. A thirty to fifty seat tasting room, and it's that's hard, you know. To whereas the Port Moody Brewers Row, you were talking about one hundred and seventy five seats in some of those places. Right. So um, the tasting room, but also just the process of like you know, say in New Westminster, or I'm sure Port Moody, based on how many breweries there are there. If we approach the city with a brewery idea, they love it. They want it. They want. They, yeah, we want this here. Let's help you. What, what can do? What can we do to make it happen? They just don't have the real estate for it. But in Burnaby, from my understanding, it's completely opposite. So they're not as encouraging. But that's city by city, and it yeah. could change ten years from now. Yeah. Uh, but we, you know, one thing we haven't talked about SFU. It's kind of a little island up there. Totally. Uh, I don't really know how to relate that. That's unique on its own. Um, a lot of leasehold land ownership, mm -hmm. but they're ninety-nine year leases. And you know, if you want one of the best views in the city, and you want a little bit of a, a paradise away from the busyness, it's a great option. Totally. I've I've seen a few condos up there over the years, and townhouses up there over the years, and some of them had stunning views, mm -hmm. and some of them slowly lost their view with trees growing higher <laughs> above them. <laughs> but that that uh, that's a neighborhood that I think gets um, it's kind of an island on its own. Yeah. So it's it's. It's, it's expensive for what it is, what was expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. We don't really have too many clients that get drawn up there, but definitely occasionally we do. Yeah. yeah. It's more an investor type, I think, up there. It's a lot of students that rent and live in those buildings. And it's kind of, like you said, it's kind of its own little island that, you know, <laughs> there's nothing walkable up there. Well, I guess there's the university city yeah. now, but like to get anywhere, you're coming down the hill. And on those three snow days a year that we get in Vancouver, it's <laughs> difficult to get in and yeah. out of there. So do you want that extra 15 minute drive up the, up yeah. the mountain yeah, to exactly. go home? All right, let's talk about the future of Burnaby here. Okay, so we mentioned, you know, Brentwood, uh, but let's just kind of sum up these four downtown cores because all four of them have massive projects and um, uh, communities underway or, or in the, coming up in the future. But we have, so Brentwood, as we mentioned, Concord, Brentwood, uh, the amazing Brentwood, mm -hmm. Solo. Solo's four. Uh, Ani is doing a development right around Gilmore Skytrain. Lettingham McAllister just finished a three building development. It, like I said, it's a lot of those bigger name developers, which is exciting for the neighborhood. Uh, but the big, big projects there are Concord and uh, Shape, Amazing Brownwood. Yeah. So there's arguably north of 20 towers that well, at least. will, yeah. I imagine, be under construction the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. And probably 20 years from now, well, over 20 towers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lougheed Mall has, uh, the, the site of where Lougheed Mall is is a plan for 20 towers and I, I have it here, uh, 20,000 residents. Um, and, and the mall, like a new mall concept too, like the malls of the future, like the, the Brentwood Mall yeah. and the new Lougheed Mall, they're, they're pretty incredible. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely not the old school mall. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not it for Lougheed though, because Lougheed is right on North Road, which Yikes. is the border of Coquitlam and, and Burnaby. And all up North Road is, if it's not developed yet, it's being developed. And it's a lot of low rise, older condo buildings that are being bought up by developers that have now, or they're allowing for more density there. And you're seeing a ton of towers coming up along all the way up North Road to Burquitlam Skytrain. Yeah, arguably, I think, uh, you know, let's call it 100 years from now, maybe even today, um, that area is attracting me more than it used to. For and sure. and as, particularly if you don't have to do a commute to, say, downtown, and there's no reason for you to be that 10 minutes close to that Brentwood is. Yeah. Um, it's got Port Moody right behind it. Mm -hmm. it. It has some great nature and, and lakes and parks, and mm -hmm. it's just closer to... Port Moody and some in Coquitlam and some beautiful stuff out that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I I do like it uh, more than I used to, and mm -hmm. and I imagine when Lowheed's done, it's going to be a pretty desirable spot for sure. Um, now I grew up in the era where there was a middle gate that turned to high gate because of the Bozas, and now there's a south gate uh, planned um, in Edmonds area, south South Burnaby, and Southgate is a massive development. Uh, 
It's 20 towers, uh, I think 6,400 units, 20,000 people, uh, completely like it's, it's just as big as these other ones. Yeah. And if you look mm -hmm. at it today, it is a warehouse in a resident surrounded by residential homes. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it defines change. Like that whole area will change. That is arguably what I would perceive as a less desirable pocket of the city. Definitely was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and with a development like Southgate, that might completely change. Totally. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, Metrotown. So I read an article saying they want to make Metrotown the one true downtown of Burnaby in 100 years. So I don't know how... What that means, I don't, uh, if that just means they expect more towers to be there, it might be more commercial. So I yeah. think probably there's a zoning with commercial aspect to it. Uh, I don't think they're planning on moving City Hall or anything to Metrotown, but maybe. Uh, but I mean, as we both have discussed many times, we prefer Brentwood over Metrotown. But Metrotown is, is just like these other areas, just like Brentwood in a way that there's a ton of development going on there. Mm -hmm. And the project, the article I read, uh, was talking about the Metrotown Mall proper site, which is uh, 46 acres, and they're talking about you know 15,000 plus homes, just like these other areas. But the unique thing in this article says this is like an 80 year to 100 year build out. Wow. So it is a long, long build out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of a shame in a way where they obviously did Metropolis within my lifespan, and that will all get demolished, and they're tearing down you know 20 year old structures and say mm -hmm. that for, for new towers, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think those malls are as efficient. They're mostly parking lots. So, totally. yeah. But I, Metrotown, it's, it's kind of a bit of a foreign, like it's, it's not, it doesn't relate to, I grew up in Metrotown. I used to take the bus there. I used to hang out there as a kid. <laughs> And now it's just this foreign little area that I, I try to avoid that mall. <laughs> it's too busy. It totally is, yeah. Um, Danny, what would you like, like to see more of in the future of Burnaby? I think like I touched on in my neighborhood of Brentwood specifically, just more little little one-off businesses. I think we've, we've got all the chains now. Uh, I think there is a desire for from the residents in the area just for some uniqueness, for some differentiation some more uh one-off little cafes and and another brewery would be fantastic and just smaller one-off little businesses that just kind of add culture and community to your little area yeah absolutely and i i have some thoughts on how to potentially get there right. i think really it comes down to zoning and how they plan the city mm -hmm. and it it's obvious based on how much development like 100 plus towers coming down the pipe and like in the works and in Burnaby it's it's clear that Burnaby is developer friendly yeah. um i mean maybe they're not and maybe maybe developers go there anyway but uh if they're developer friendly the the issue that i have is that they're they they have these massive communities coming in so if they have these massive communities with towers that meet residential detached homes i'd like to see it kind of blend in you know um and and i guess what i mean by that is I'd like to see more encouragement of say uh, mixed density, like like blend it from tower to house, and what like so maybe more mid-rise villages leading into fourplexes, triplexes, duplexes, infill housing. Um, don't mm -hmm. just go single family home on an eight thousand square foot lot meet sixty story tower, <laughs> and and if you spread out, uh, you know density a little bit more, you know you get busy streets to be lined with low rises or townhouses and, and save the single family for the, you know, where you want it, um, but blend it more. Uh, I think you're going to get more businesses away from uh, those, those SkyTrain cores. Yeah. And if there's more retail space away from the expensive areas, there's more likely to be some creative businesses there. Um, also, you just, you're going to attract more young families if you have more housing options for them. Not, a, not every family wants to be in a condo in the sky and then they have to, you know, the gap between a condo in the sky and a house in Burnaby might, well, it's a $1.5 million starting point, say, for a lot of neighborhoods mm -hmm. for houses. It would be great for those people to have $800,000, million, $1.2 million options that are three bedroom. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and in order to get there, you need to have create like infill. Right. And so I, I, you know, right now, and this is not just a Burnaby specific thing there. They've been late to, um, adopt basement suites, legal basement suites, which now they have, and, and they're late to go with the laneway housing and the infill housing, but I believe they will do it, but they have a lot of lots that are great candidates for these, uh, for these types of developments. 
But aside from that, I mean, Burnaby, like most cities, they shouldn't penalize uh, floor, a floor area for going into the ground like a basement. You know, the future needs basement suites. Um, you shouldn't be, they're building a lot of homes today that I think will be torn down in the next 30 to 50 years if, if density improves. Totally. But they're definitely not building homes that should be lasting 100 plus years. Mm. When you look down a lot of the streets in, say, East Burnaby, there's not a consistency to the look of the street. And I don't know, I don't have a solution for that one, but if they were to improve density in any way with single family, it would be great for that to be comboed with some sort of design guidelines or building schemes or something that, that uh, goes towards a, a level of construction, like a quality construction or design or some sort of, uh, I don't know, um, what would that be? Like, uh, like a street that looks the same, like mm -hmm. Queens Park, mm -hmm. you know, a, a similar feel. And I, the Queens Park's the only one that I can think of in New Westminster that has design guidelines. So implementing that in Burnaby would be a challenge, totally. but maybe there's a simple way to do it. Even like some of those really nice streets in the Heights north of like North Burnaby, Capitol Hill area, the new there's lots of new construction. Uh, it's a really desirable place to live. It's just every house is completely different. There's a craftsman next to like a super modern like flat roof house next to like this strange looking like me metallic. Um, I'm thinking of an exact house that I just can't <laughs> stand. But like everything is completely different. So I totally understand what you're saying. And I think that would, I don't know, I think that just like adds a little bit of community to the field or to the neighborhood too. And, and Burby has some beautiful homes. For sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm more talking about like the, the mid-level neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you know, but... Let's talk about a, a above, like Upper Deer Lake, for example. Mm -hmm. That is the classic example of someone that will pay 1.5, 2 million for a lot and put 600,000 in the structure. <laughs> and, you know, if you look at, say, Whistler, for example, people are putting more in the structure than they're putting in the land in a lot of areas or definitely in the Okanagan. But Burnaby is kind of the opposite. It's the, it's, I mean, he's, I'm sure other markets have similarities, but Burnaby is, I'd like people to put more into the structure and how do you get people to put more in the structure? Well, one, you know, they're increasing energy things, you know, a step code. So that's going to cause higher quality homes, improve the density, the FSR, maybe step code might, if they go aggressive on the step code, that might lead to some sort of design guidelines because you have to design energy efficient homes. Um, but I, I, it's a tough one. It really is. It's, it's, it's loaded right now with homes that are being built that are not, you know, 100 years from now minded. They're like, likely going to get torn down before their lifespan. Mm -hmm. And it would just be great for change, some, some, some steps towards change for that. Totally. Yeah. Have you seen anything in other areas of the city that have adopted different guidelines that have, and then you've seen a big improvement over the next 10 years in those areas? You know, I don't know enough about it, but I, um, I think, I like the density that Kitsilino has. I like what mm -hmm. they've done with those old homes. Yeah. Uh, but that was simply from a matter of protecting, heritage protecting the exteriors and letting people carve up the interiors. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the one that stands out the most. I, I love it when you can take a 5,000 square foot, 100 year old home and turn it into five, you know, units and three of them are suited for families. Yeah. I mean, that's just great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there's problems with it. Parking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's all I have for Burnaby. There's a lot on Burnaby. Yeah, yeah. We're, and Denny, how long will we be living there for? To be determined. <laughs> to be determined. I, honestly, I really like it right now for this stage of life that I'm in. Yeah. Uh, I don't see myself going anywhere in the next five years. Yeah, and it's a very attractive city for professionals, uh, anyone that lit, works in Vancouver, anyone mm. that wants to be close to the city but totally. not right in it. Um, and it has, uh, particularly for me, it's just attractive families that want homes that don't want that tight density that East Van has. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. That's it for Burnaby, guys. 